So spades first and then fork. And we're looking for broad tines on a fork. We're not looking for a pitchfork. We're looking for a, a spading fork or a digging fork. And we want a, a head size that works for you, for your garden and your handle length. So some of our forks are smaller and some are larger. This flat tine is what we want, flat and broad tine, not the narrow tines in most cases. And we don't need these points. A little bit of point on our Smith and Hawkins here, or what now will be the bulldog fork. That point is enough. You're putting a lot of pressure on that point with your weight on it. You don't need these things, which are gonna go through your boot, not gonna go through your irrigation line a lot easier. They're also attached, this head is attached to this handle with just a collar that slips over the two and uh, they tend to come off. That's one of those Ames problems. They uh, bought a lot of companies and manufactured things more cheaply. So slightly different size from a border fork to a spading fork. And that's a personal thing. Nice to be able to pick them up and use them. They are heavier, the forged forks, but mine and I have begged Clarington Forge, please, can you make these again? This is a potato spading fork and the back side is triangular, the front side is broad, whereas the new ones aren't that way. And this holds and digs better. If you can find that kind or find somebody that's producing those, then go for it. But you'll find them at, uh, this is Lee Valley, the, uh, the Clarington Forge. It's um, I, supposedly the only forge left in the Western world that's still making garden tools. So this is all one forged piece and not gonna break. They used to come, Smith and Hawkins used to send them out. They got them from Clarington Forge. Um, they would send them out with a note that said that there um, is such, a, this is probably the strongest fork made in the world, but there is such a thing as an immovable object. Uh, and and you, what's going to break is not this fork, but probably something in your body. So don't use it too hard. Um, so Lee Valley has, so you can see the difference here in the size of the head and the spacing on the on the tines, I would go for this fork to their border fork rather than their spading fork. Whoops. Um, and this, if you want a second fork so that you can um, divide plants more easily, we've shown you how you put the forks in back to back, then get an inexpensive fork like this one, which you can get from A.M. Leonard, and that's not inexpensive, but you can get them uh, um, at local places inexpensively. Something about um, uh, uh, landscaping people in the landscape industry. This is the only fork that A.M. Leonard offers that's a digging fork. They have manure forks and pitching forks, but not uh, forks to use. Steve found this company, it's called Red Pig Tools, that's also carrying the uh, Bulldog, is another um, brand of the forged fork where it's all forged in one piece. But we haven't, we haven't ordered from them yet. A weeding tool is our next most important thing. It needs to be sharp and hold the edge and comfortable and appropriate for whatever weeds you're working with. So everybody's got their own kind of thing to use. Um, we have quite a collection of various things that we picked up over, over time and you'll find these in uh, AM Leonard. They've got very few weeding tools. It's another one of those landscape versus gardener things. Um, long handled uh, weeders are called hoes. Uh, we like the, uh, the hula hose that we can push and pull. And we like the uh, little finger hose that are, now I've forgotten what those are called. Someone's gonna remember what those are called. Um, but our favorite weeder of all time is this one in the middle. It's a triangular blade, it holds its, holds its weight well, uh, holds its edge well, it's well balanced. Other companies are making ones like them, but they're not quite the same, not attached the same. Um, this company is not making them anymore. And so we keep looking and the closest we've come, we certainly don't find them locally is at uh, one of our local garden centers. Um, but uh, Gardener Supply still does make the Dutch hand hoe. They used to cost $20, and now they're up to 45. They know that we like them a lot. And there are a lot of variations on it, where it's a disc or a small triangle. Lots more weeders at Gardener Supply in Lee Valley than at um, uh, uh, Lee Valley with all of their different tools. And you have to try these, you have to put them in your hand. That's one reason to go to conferences where they have, where they bring in suppliers because sometimes these, these uh, online suppliers like AM Leonard will have a booth set up at conferences that are say for the arborists or for the 
nursery association or for the perennial plant association they're worth going to and paying to go into their sales uh, conference area um, i don't understand why we need a separate tool like this one um, i think that's meant to be a dandelion digger but um, a fork works very well on a dandelion our friend gail morell who we've heard here um, helping us do a webinar swears by this type of weeder. She says, I never, it's always in my hand now. So you might want to try to leave Allie. Uh, she said, this can loosen anything. I tend to use my fork. Uh, 